Palette Master Element 1.3.17 is out. Let's talk about it. This is Artist Right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. If you're new, welcome. If you haven't following the channel, you will know that I always start out with a disclaimer. This time around, it is a recommendation. Press on that yes button and upgrade to 1.3.17. This is a very stable version. I have been extensively testing this across numerous Mac, PCs, calibration devices, and SCB display. And so far so good, everything's been working really well. I can't test every single combination, so once you try it in your system, let me know how it goes in the comment section below. You will also notice that the recommendation has an asterisk on it. And that is because if you have the Mac Studio, the approach is a little bit different, but I'll share that with you in a few slides. As always, I recommend that you download the latest known stable version that works on your system and have it archived so that if for some reason this update doesn't work, you can always go back. BenQ have made one big change, and this has been a request that I've made for a long time now to their Palette Master Element website. They have now put selected stable versions on the site so you can go and download it directly. I'll leave a link to their site in the description below. This way you don't have to click on the Palette Master Element download link in the description of my videos anymore. This is really awesome. Let's talk about what's new in 1.3.17. One of them is the improved support for dual SCB display calibration. Before 1.3.16, what you have to do is disconnect the USB uplink cable, or if you have a SCB display with USB-C, you have to disconnect one display altogether in order for you to do a calibration. Now you can have both display link and you can calibrate them just fine. Palette Master Element will write the LUT to the correct display and you won't have any problems anymore. It also has full support now for macOS Monterey, that is Mac OS 12 and also Windows 11. It has been for the past few versions now, but they definitely have improved the support on them. There are a lot of bug fixes, for example, scaling interface where you can't click on the continue button or the buttons are not aligned up properly. That has all been fixed and the calibration device not recognized bug should also be fixed in this version too. It has full support for M1 and it has been supporting M1 for quite some time now. This said, if you have a new Mac Studio like I have, you may be surprised that the latest version, for example, 1.3.16 and this version 1.3.17 won't run, but there is a way around it. And I also wanna give a quick shout out and thank you to E. Coleman TLPSS who pointed this out because I have released a video on the Mac Studio doing the review of them. And I've been so focused on testing 1.3.17 different builds that I haven't really gone back that far. And he pointed out that 1.3.15 works. So I've tested it out. It works just fine. It will calibrate your SW display. So there you go. If you have the Mac Studio, go to BenQ website, download 1.3.15 and it will work just fine. As far as using the latest version, don't do that right now, but BenQ is actively working on an update that will bring full compatibility on the latest version to the Mac Studio. All other Macs, you can upgrade to 1.3.17 without any problems. Let's quickly go over SW2700 PT versions. There are three of them. The way how you can find this out is look at the manufacturer tag and there is an MFG date on the back of your display. You can figure that out very easily and use this chart to decode it. The latest known calibration software that will work with all these three versions, I believe was 1.3.15. And now 1.3.17 should work on all of these. This being said, firmware version 2 and 3, I can't verify, but based on my conversation with BenQ, they have tested this in their lab and they have verified to me that it passed the validation. I've tested version 1 because that is the one that I have, so it should be good for all SW2700 PT and any other SW displays. Now let's talk about stability. On the PC side of things, everything is good. On the Mac side, occasionally I find that once you finish a calibration or validation and you click on finish in Palette Master Element, the screen would go blank. The display is still on, backlight still on, but the signal gets cut for some reason. I have verified that this does not affect the color in any way at all, so you are good with your SW display hardware calibration. However, it is a minor inconvenience or annoyance. To fix this problem, there are two ways of going about it. Power cycle display, turn it off and on. This should fix the issue. If it doesn't, I recommend disconnecting and reconnecting the display cable. That should definitely work to resolve this issue. BenQ is aware of this and is working on a fix. 1.3.17 also introduced one more change to the profile type. 
So in 1.3.16 and before, you would generally go in and choose the LUT type that you want to use, whether this is matrix or 16 or 8-bit LUT. Now this LUT type has to do with the way how the ICC profile is being built, and it has nothing to do with the 3D lookup table inside the display. Because this is a hardware calibrated display, this ICC profile doesn't really do any color correction anyway, so the LUT type doesn't really affect the overall performance or calibration that much. So in this version 1.3.17, what BenQ have done is take away the LUT selection. So right now you are going to be using Matrix and for my calibration test, it has been working just fine. This won't create any problems whatsoever. But this is a change that I want to, you guys to be aware of. Let's have a look at the best and safe calibration setting. For Mac, use ICC Profile version 4 PC. I still recommend using version 2. Otherwise, all the other settings I'm about to share now are similar between these two platforms. For the best setting, RGB primary, I recommend choosing panel native. This is going to give you the largest color gamut possible that your gamut can show, which is slightly larger than Adobe RGB. If you want to go with safe settings, Adobe RGB is definitely the safe way to go about it. Now for black point, I recommend using 0.3 nit as a black point, but there is a little asterisk there. And this is to denote that if you use a Spider 5 device, I recommend setting this black point to 0.5. It's going to give you a better black tonal scaling. For any other device, 0.3 tends to work really well. And you can always vary these values yourself as well. If you use DaVinci Resolve, the recommendation is to use Rec. 709, Gamma 2.4, and set the NIT to 0.3 for all the calibration devices and 0.5 for the Spider 5. Now, with this being said, I have not tested the calibration setting for Resolve because that is not the software that I use. That's the reason why it is in red, but give it a try and let me know how it goes. This said, all of the RGB primary and black point are just a suggestion. They are not a rule. So feel free to test this out and substitute in any value that you want to use. What I am doing here is running the display through a lot of tests. So it will save you time trying to find the best setting. But if there's something that works best for your needs and workflow, please continue to use it. Don't let me convince you otherwise. This being said, this has been a really stable release. I still highly recommend that you download 1.3.15 save it on your system as an archive. And also if you are using the new Mac Studio, definitely use 1.3.15 for the time being. Otherwise, 1.3.17 should work just fine. And that's pretty much just that. So I hope you find this video helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Give this a like, subscribe, and hit on the bell you're new and in our retrust.